I'm Fig, and I'm going to be working today with um, my compatriot over here, and we're going to be working on some uh, glass flame work. Uh, we're going to be making dragonflies. Hi, I'm Wes Fleming, Wesley Fleming, and I will also be making a dragonfly. We'll be having our two different techniques to make all of the parts for one dragonfly each and then doing sort of a mashup when we put them together. So neither of them will be only from one parts or the other. Yeah, so we're gonna make some Frankensteins. <laughs> so well, let's get at it. So a lot of what we're doing here is um, building components. Um, some of what we do when, when I build an insect is go from start to finish um, one and done kind of a thing. Um, with the dragonflies, I make lots of components, lots of different things, and then assemble it, sort of like a furniture maker would make a chair. He would make the spokes of the, the uh, back of the chair. He'd make the legs. He'd make the seat. And then glue up day, he would put everything together. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to start. We've pre-made some wings so that we didn't have to match up our wings perfectly. That happened yesterday and last night. So I'm going to start by making one wing, just so you can see how that's done. But thankfully, I don't have to worry about making it match any of those other ones. While Wes is making a wing, I'll probably make a wing, another wing later. I have made some pre-made wings. Um, just like those cooking shows you watch. I'm going to make body component right now. I have some, but I want to make sure I have more body components um, stock for the body. I'm using dichroic glass, and I'm putting a red coating on it and stretching it out. And then I'll break it up into the segments of the body. The dichroic is spendy, so I heat it up slowly in a nice, dirty flame, and then melt off all that carbon. I've just taken some transparent color for the wing and then added a little bit of two opaque colors to that gather, which I'm then going to twist up to mix some of those colors in. So I've touched another rod down to connect to it to make it easier to stretch it out. I've twisted it up. I'm just going to do a very simple mixing together of that. I've puntied up this chip of dichroic glass, just a sparkly metallic coating, put on the glass, and that's going to be my canvas. This is my paintbrush of dark red. Go in the palette of my flame, load up the brush with some lava, and literally just paint it right onto my canvas. Put a nice smear of color on there. So I took my twisted up gather and I smashed it with some pliers that have texture in them. They're not any special glass working pliers, they're just from the hardware store. the best place to get tools, your gotcha. local hardware store. <laughs> so it has a nice texture to it. I've stretched it out into a shape similar to those wings. I'm gonna stretch it out and shape it a bit more, but I'm trying to not heat it up too much. If I put too much heat into it, it will melt out that nice texture that I put in there, and then there's no point to having done that. So I buttered up my piece of dichroic, and just one piece of bread, I folded it over to make a sandwich, or like a roll there. And now I'm gonna trim off the, trim the crust and sort of seal off that red color onto the inside. And stretch it out, and I'll have another little piece of body stock. 
I'm adding a punty or a handle to the wing so I can pick it up easily later to add it to the dragonfly so I don't have to hold it in my hand. And now I'm just stretching out the part of the wing where it will attach to the body of the dragonfly. I'm gonna add a little bit more glass there to thicken it up so it'll be a stronger connection. This glass has a high coefficient of expansion, so you can see when I put it in the flame, it cracks and pops a little bit. Yeah, when you heat up glass, it expands. When you cool it down, it shrinks. Yeah. And this glass moves a lot, so it gets shocky. So I get to use my scissors and cut glass, and it's really satisfying to do. It's like cutting taffy with um, scissors. I really like to do that. Now that I've made a wing, I'm gonna start in on the, on the tail of my dragonfly. So the wings of the dragonfly are a mixture of transparent and a couple different colors of opaque yellow. And then the body of my dragonfly is going to be a mixture of black and red and orange. I'm not using any dichroic for my parts, so I'm trying to roughly match the color palette of what Mike already pulled with his dichroic bits. Kibbles and bits. Dragonflies, dragonflies are wonderful little bugs. They're the big hunters, the big game in the insect world along with the praying mantis. They're the big hunters. So this is just the very tip of the dragonfly's tail. It's what I'll be building the rest of the tail on. And the tip of their tail has these little grabbers that they use to grab onto each other with or onto a reed grass if they're resting on it. So I'm gonna put those little grabbers on the end of it its tail before I start building the rest of its tail. And this is uh, not any specific species of dragonfly. If you know a lot about dragonflies, many species of dragonfly can only be determined which species they are by these little grabbers on the end of their tail. Really? I didn't know that. Oh. So these aren't gonna be perfect specific little grabbers. They're just kind of a generic dragonfly tail bit. Mm -hmm. Makes you, it a lot easier for me. You could tell the, if it's male or female sometimes by the tail, the fat tails are, I don't know, we read, we always reference books and I, you know, computers. I used to think people would think I was crazy. You'd see me out in the street, like, looking like I was one of those crazy people you read about. But I was, I'm probably tracking some kind of bug and trying to look at the morphology of how it's put together and see it. But nobody could see that's what I'm doing. They just see this crazy guy dancing around out on the street. So I've added another, a new handle to the tip of the tail, and I'm just trying to make sure it's perfectly on center with the bit of glass that's gonna be the tip of the tail. If it's not perfectly on center, it's gonna get more and more challenging as I build the tail uh, to have it not be lopsided and lumpy and off center. 
So I'm trying to start with a good foundation of on-centeredness. Finished with this stock. I'm going to work on some wing. I'm going to make another wing just so people could see how I do it for those people that are interested. And obviously, you are watching, you're interested. And then I'm going to take the wings that I've already made and do a little surgery to them to make them a little bit more realistic, to capture a little bit more detail. So if you're a sculptor, no matter what your medium, and you're trying to do a naturalistic or, or an interpretation of something, um, what you want to do is capture as much details as you could possibly capture. Uh, you, no matter how good of an artist you may be and how many details you could capture, if you look at the real insect next to your model, it's going to look like a cartoon. So as many details as I can capture, the less the viewer's brain has to fill in the, the blanks, and the more realistic they're going to be like, oh, wow, I saw this glass bugs. They were so real. And uh, so I try to get as much detail as I can get. And the way you do that um, is by observation. You know, Wes and I have been talking a lot about what we do and what we're doing currently as we're doing it, probably because we have, you know, we're wondering what the heck to say while we're being videotaped. But, um, and that's wonderful. That's really good to know those techniques. But so much of it is how well do you see your subject? How well do you understand? How, I mean, even if I'm building something that's not natural, I mean, I have to see it in my brain, and that's when it really happens. Then a good way to explain it is you're standing at the refrigerator door with the door open wondering what's for dinner tonight. But once you get that um, idea, then it's just putting the recipe together. And that, that's just the technique. But first you have to see it in your brain to know what, how, what to do. Then. Whether you can cook very good, that's another story. So I'm building up the tail of my dragonfly segment by segment. I had the black tip, and then I added a red segment. However, you might notice when this red glass is hot, it looks black, which can be a pain sometimes when you're trying to see where one color ends and another begins. Uh, but I want it to be that color, so I have to put up with that. And then I'm also adding decorations. And I just put a little tiny segment of black, or a little tiny dots of black on the red segment, and then a little bit of black between that red segment and this orange segment to delineate them from each other. So I heated the glass up. I made a gather touched it down, and then I'm waiting a moment until it stiffens up a little bit. It went from the consistency of honey to taffy, and now it's quite stiff. So I want it to hold the shape that I got it into, taking some extra glass off of it. And then I'm just going to flatten that bit to put be able to put that next black bit on there. And I'm going to add the little decoration dots to the side of it. If you're curious what I'm doing, I took some of this twisty Zanferico or um, pretty cane that I made previously. What is the technical term there? I believe Zanferico translates the to other word, though? fancy cane. The pretty cane. Pretty cane. <laughs> I took this pretty cane and I bundled up three pieces. And I'm just going to uh, twist it up and mash it up. Um, basically, uh, an equivalent, oops, part of it just jumped off, equivalent of uh, Damascus steel, where you would take different metals and fold them over and over and over again to create a different pattern. Um, some of you may, you may be aware of that kind of steel. And this is very much the same technique. I'm folding the colors many times 
and scrambling them, so to speak. And that's going to give me that colorful, playful pattern in the wing. So I bundle it up, twist it up, flatten it, and stretch it out like you may have, you saw, were watching uh, Wesley pulling out that other wing before he started the tail. A fun fact about Wesley and myself is I was born in the Northeast, up and around um, Connecticut, about an hour or so from where Wesley lives currently. Wesley was born in Western Pennsylvania, about an hour away from where I live currently. So our sort of lives sort of went crossed each other's paths. And he ended up where I originated, and I ended up where he originated. Doing the same thing. Doing the same thing. So I'm still sitting here building up this, the tail segment by segment, but I'm alternating between the red and the orange. The cameras have didymium filters on them? No. no? So with the glasses that I'm wearing, they filter, uh, you probably see this orange or yellow flare coming off the glass as I work. And they filter that flare out so I can see what I'm doing more easily. Uh, but a side effect of them filtering different colors is that, to me, both these rods look the same color. So I have to kind of look under or over my glasses each time I pick them up to make sure I pick up the right rod. Because these glasses are filtering certain colors of the spectrum out, they wind up making some of the rods look the same color. But you get used to that. So again, this glass, I heat it up until it becomes the consistency of honey. And then I put it down. I'm pushing it together and pulling it apart a little bit to make these segments kind of bulbous. But then it stiffens up pretty quickly as it cools. And then I better control of it. As Mike was saying before, the more details that you put on the piece, the less cartoony it looks. So that's a struggle working with glass, is how to have it not look like just a hard, rigid, cartoony creature, but something more realistic and interesting. That's true. I, although I think glass is a great medium to mimic other things, from a, a, an animal to a a mineral or, or anything, it really lends itself well to that. It's such a plastic material. Mm -hmm. But it does lend itself much better to insects with their hard, shiny bodies than it does to, say, a shaggy dog. That's true. It's really, I haven't figured out how to make cotton or even a fuzzy bumblebee. Not quite figured out how to make fuzz yet out of glass without using glue or something. I know uh, some of the paperweight makers, like Paul Stankard, have some really nice fuzzy bumblebees, but they're encapsulated inside the clear, so he's able to um, capitalize on that. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I think you said it, Mike. I said it all. 
So like these pulling, scrambling, and making this little Damascus, so to speak, uh, glass is great. It's like I'm almost pulling out a little miniature baby sheet of stained glass. I actually worked in a stained glass factory uh, right out of college. Um, I graduated in, uh, I think it was 1985, 86. And um, it was a, t that was the toughest time in my career for me. Not that I don't struggle today, but um, you know, you're fresh out of college, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and uh, totally in love with this medium, and um, need something to do and way to work. And um, glass uh, manufacturing or sculpting is—it's not like a painter or some, I could just go get a piece of paper and draw on or something like that. It's kind of intensive equipment-wise. So, it, you know, there wasn't a lot of places like this Corning Studio or other places like this around the country um, with wonderful intern programs or places I could even go and rent. There were a few. I found myself up in New York City at the Experimental Workshop on Mulberry Street, uh, renting studio time, uh, working in various artists um, as a hired gun for other artists and their work. But today it's a good time to be a glass artist, I think, for a lot of reasons, including the fact that you can get out and get an internship or take classes at a plethora of places. So I've finished the tail of the dragonfly that I'm working on. You can see the colors are starting to be, become visibly more of their color that they were when they were on the original rod, except for this one where I just put on because that's still really hot. Uh, it's probably about, I don't know, eight or 900 degrees Fahrenheit right now, whereas the tip of the tail I can actually touch now, whereas maybe that middle segment's still a couple hundred degrees Fahrenheit. And I've left this nub of black on the end. It's probably hard for you to see the difference between the red and the black, but this will give me a thinner connection point that I can come back to later to heat up and slowly warm up that bit of glass. I didn't think and of that. And add it to the piece so that it is less likely to make the piece crack. You saw when I put some of the rods into the flame that it makes the glass crack. So I don't wanna blow up all of this work that I just did later when I go to put it onto the body. I didn't think of that yesterday when we were deciding what colors we were gonna make our dragonflies. And we thought, red, red's kinda of cool, but I, it didn't dawn on me at the time that when red it is warm, the red rod looks red when it's room temperature, but when it's a couple hundred degrees, it darkens up and it looks like black. And it makes it probably harder for the viewer to see that differential that you just pointed out. So I made a little uh, wing. So I have a spare in case my other ones that I made previously mess up. It's, it's usually a nice thing. Um, I'm going to finish these previous wings. Um, you may have seen a dragonfly. They have that little iconic black dot on all four wings. It's called a petrostigma, I believe. It it's actually helps the wings in when they're flapping. Uh, the dragonfly is probably the strongest flyer of all the insects. They have four wings that can move independent of each other. And they have this sort of stained glass latticework of veining going through the wings that act as sort of like an umbrella unfolding and folding and opening up or like fins that can capture the air and push it any direction they want it to go. And um, that's what I'm trying to imitate with the, that veining with the uh, 
um, Damascus style, and Wesley was doing a little bit with some of the texturing device. But that little weight actually adds weight and helps them maneuver that wing and flap it around, that petrostigma. And it's also, like I said, iconic in, like everybody knows that, whether you're aware of it or not, you've all seen that little black dot. So I gotta make four little black dots, more or less in the same spot on all four wings. Uh-oh, Mike, I didn't put black dots on my wings. Ah, we, I can do it, or we can do it later. To bring it up to your standards. Well, just trying to <laughs> bring it up to uh, get all those details. Mike and I have never taught together before. We've only taught on our own or with other people, so it's fun interacting mm -hmm. with each other. We're both a little nutty. We're a couple of wild men bouncing off the walls in the studio. So now I'm preparing to make the body of the dragonfly. This is what the tail will attach to. So I made a gather of the black glass and I flattened it into a lollipop shape. It's a highly technical term for how to shape the glass. So I put the orange on one side. Let me look under my glasses, yes. And now I'm gonna put a bit of the red onto the other side of the lollipop, also known as a lolly. Makes you wonder where we come up with these fancy terms. So I have one color on either side. Now I'm going to touch another rod up to those two rods and twist it and do a twisty cane. Whoops, luckily I have another rod there. Glass doesn't always break where you expect it to break. So I'm gonna twist these colors up. It's gonna be sort of like a candy cane, the way that you see the white and the red twisted on a candy cane, except I'm not gonna stretch it out. These are going to make the stripes on its body. So I'm gonna twist these colors all together, but I'm gonna keep it into a nice, concise, short shape. And unfortunately for you at home or wherever you are, the red and the orange and the black all become the same color when they're quite hot. There you can start to see those twists in there when I get it super hot. Again, something that Mike just said we didn't think out beforehand when you're making the video that the colors all look the same when they're hot. Sorry. Sucks to be you. <laughs> we also have a, a studio audience. We're teaching a class right now. Our class gets to watch us do this. And it's okay with me if you guys have questions or want to pipe up. Um, but. It's kind of neat, just like a real TV show, huh? Yeah, where's the laugh track? I know. <laughs> so I twisted those colors up, I kept it concise, but then I also used this, what's called a marver, on top of my torch. My marver is made out of steel to flatten the sides and the bottom to shape it into more of the proper shape for the dragonfly. I love the origin of words. I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but the word marver. The word marver, um, they didn't have so much steel pat plates a thousand years ago, and they did fashion glass, and they would use marble, slabs of marble to not only shape the glass like Wes was doing, but also it cools the glass down, and, and you could use that to your advantage and I believe the word marver comes, has origins with the word marble. I believe, yes, it is the French word for the word marble. Is it French? Or is it a Latin base? Or? I've been taught that it was the French word, huh. but I could be wrong. There's a lot of terminology in glassworking that comes from other languages, like punties. I'm 
heating up a glass rod, I'm going to be assembling these um, segments that I've made previously into a tail next. And each segment is attached to a glass rod. That glass rod will refer to as a punty. There's no English translation for the word punty, but in Latin, the word for, pun for bridge is puntum, or it comes from punty, or so it, it comes from punty. Punty comes from puntum, and it, it allows me to bridge my hand to this little thing and maneuver it and get it ripping hot without um, destroying my hand. So I, I just find that very interesting, the origin of words and terminology in the glass world. We won't go into the old Italian misogynistic uh, terminology for a lot of stuff. So I added the tail, which I had pre-made to this body after I had shaped the body. And then I pulled out a little neck for it. I want it to be a little thicker and blacker, so I just added a little bit of black. And while I'm doing this process, I'm keeping the central body warm because I'm going to be adding a lot of little bits to it for all of the legs and the wings. Dragonflies are a pretty complicated insect to make because they have this tiny little body with 12 attachment points. They have four wings and six legs, as well as the tail and the head that all come off of that center bit. So it makes it a little challenging. That's where all the stress is in the glass, is in that little area where you have 12 connection points. So I clean, cleaned up the neck slash head connection area now I'm going to put a little black bit where each of the wings will be added. This will make it easier to add the wings later. Hopefully I will be able to come back and heat up each of the, actually Mike will be adding wings to this one or maybe I'll be adding his wings to this one. Anyways. That way, just as I heated up that small tip of the tail to add it to the body, I will hopefully be able to come back and heat up these small little tips to add the wings without cracking the body of the piece because the body of the piece will be pretty cold at that point. In an ideal world, the piece would not crack and fly apart into 100 pieces. But as both Mike and I are well familiar with, that happens to a lot of the glass that we make. Just say no. It can be frustrating right. at times. But I need to, uh, my glasses not only block out that yellow flare, they're also magnifiers. But I'm an old man. I, get, I need more magnification, so I'm going to double up. And now I can see what I'm doing. Yay! While I'm adding these stubs for the wings, I still need to be keeping the body of the dragonfly warm. But obviously, the tail is cooled down at this point. You can see I'm holding it with my hand. But if I don't keep that area where the leg attachments will be going on warm while I'm adding these wings, then when I go back to add the leg segments, the piece will crack. Just say no. Just say no to crack. I got that one on at a bad angle, so I just took it back off. I'm going to try that again. One thing that I find really helps when I'm making glass for doing these tiny details. Shaky day. 
a lot of people are tempted to hold their breath when they're trying to get things in just the right place. But if you hold your breath, you start denying your body of oxygen. And when that happens, you start to shake worse. So it's very important when you're doing very small detailed work as well as who knows what other kind of work. If you do very deep, steady breathing, keep your body oxygenated that really helps to be less shaky. And you also might notice I have some tweezers stuck through my torch here. And also I can rest my wrists on the edges and corners of the torch to help steady my hands while I do these fine details. Yep, and we got our elbows tucked into our gut, so it's stabilizing. Any little shake at our elbow is gonna translate into a big shake down at our hand or our wrist. At home, I have a nice setup, a much more ergonomic wrist rest setup yep. to help me when I'm sitting for hours straight doing very small detailed work. It takes a lot of stress off my shoulders. Same. But it's bolted to my table in my studio. So I that also have elbow rest too. Doesn't come with me. Because the elbows ergonomically need to rest past the end of the table. Other things is we don't want to bend our wrists. We want our wrists out straight so the chi just flow, flows straight through our, our wrists into our hands. We want our, I like to have my knees slightly above my hips, my back straight, so my lower back. I'm a sitter when I work. A lot of people that work on the torch like to stand but because of the tiny work that I do, I, I need the stability of sitting down and then I got used to it and I'm lazy, so I like to sit when I work. So um, the ergonomics of sitting, you know, for hours on end, you wanna optimize that so as to mitigate any detrimental effects of sitting for so long. So, I got all the legs, seg the first segment of each of all the legs on the one side. And now I'm just working my way down the other side, adding these segments. And they're so thin, they're like one to two millimeters thick. So that when I come back to them later and heat them up, they are not so likely to crack in the heat because of the, their thermal coefficient of expansion. This glass expands and contracts a lot as it heats and cools. But when it's so thin, there's not so much of it to expand and contract. So it makes it easier to have it not crack on you, so. It also doesn't insulate itself. That's the other quality of glass is it's a really good insulator. So if you have a thick piece of glass, the skin shrinks as it cools off, but it insulates the core and that stays expanded and that can cause a stress that makes it want to crack. But when you're dealing with something that's maybe a millimeter, two millimeters thick, it's able to shed its heat throughout the thickness of the piece of glass. Hence, it's not gonna move around as much and cause as much stress. Makes so sense. now that I have all those leg segments on, I'm gonna build the head. You can see that the colors in the body are starting to cool down now. And that's visible to you because the red and the orange are starting to become more red and orange instead of just black. But at the front, it's still quite warm. Those colors are much more black. So I need to get this head bit on there before that body cools down or I would likely crack the body, which would then cause me to go back to square one or at least to have to rebuild the body and hopefully keep the tail. So I just wound a bunch of the orange glass around the little neck part that I had built. I'm gonna continue melting it back. I'm gonna turn my torch down a little bit so I have more control over where the heat goes. You have a tail built yet? 
yes. I'm sure you're way ahead of me, aren't you? <laughs> Dang. Sorry. You can't rush goodness. What can I say? Yeah. It's important to be able to, you build up your muscle memory, and then you can work quickly, but you never want to rush, because then you start screwing things up or getting something in the flame that shouldn't be in the flame. And you have to go the speed of the glass. The glass has its own speed. How fast it heats up, how slow, fast it cools off, and that directly translates into how much the glass is actually moving around is how hot it is. So you're sort of forced to, to move in that speed, in that time frame. So that orange bit that I had on there for the head, I squashed back and flattened it into kind of a button shape. But then I also used my tweezers to flatten it top to bottom. And then I also smushed it back again. And it made it into this kind of rectangular shape. Now I'm going to add the mouth parts. So I have my black very hot. I'm heating up the front of that orange. I'm really going to wipe that on there. That leaves a big deposit of the black glass on the front of the face of the dragonfly. Always try to remember to remove the waste glass from the end of my rod because that had the orange and black mixed together. I probably don't want that if I'm going to just be looking to add a little bit of black glass somewhere. And now I'm going to use my tweezers. They just have this serration to them, which is very nice for adding a texture. And I'm going to use them to press this texture into the face. This is the texture of its mouth part. some reason it's not importing the texture very well. There we go. So now I have the mouth part. Now I'm going to build the eyes. So the dragonflies have huge eyes relative to the side of their head. They start down below the mouth and go all the way up to the top of the head and almost touch the top. They just barely. It allows them to see almost in 365 degree. Yeah. Um, the big hunters in the insect world, uh, the eyes are very important. Uh, dragonflies, praying mantises um, are have very uh, good eyesight. After I pulled the yellow off of there. It left a little too thin of a nub, which heated up too easily and quickly and then boiled. And I don't want to have, when, it, when the glass boils, it gets bubbly and then it oftentimes wants to crack there later. So I had to go back and remove that part. All right, almost done with this tail. I'm going to give it a club. And I gotta catch up. I'll make a head. Run, run fast as you can. Can't catch I'm me. Going, I'm, I can't I'm the catch stinky you. cheese man. What'd you say, stinky cheese man? Yeah. I never. You don't know that book? Never heard that. It's better than the gingerbread man book, that's for sure. The stinky cheese man? Yeah. <laughs> Who really wants to catch the stinky cheese man? Can't remember. It's like the goat that that is the only one that actually cares about catching him and eating him, right? He goes around and he's like, you can't catch me. Everyone's like, yeah, go away. Yeah, I'm we don't ahead. want you here. <laughs> <laughs> so I put a yellow blob down for each of the eyes. Now I'm going to encase that in this transparent color to give them more depth. But I want them to be pretty cool so that the yellow doesn't get sucked up into the transparent. So I have a nice gather. I wipe it right down onto that yellow. And then I'm going to come back 
and remove some of the extra. Meanwhile, I'm just stacking dots, stacking components. I'm Mike's, just about there. Mike's tail is going to be a lot fancier and more sparkly than my tail. So it requires a lot more attention. I've never made a sparkly tail like he does, so. Too bad I'm not watching this streaming, otherwise I could learn how he does it. You could watch it later on YouTube. Really? Yeah. In a couple of Wowzers. weeks or so, it should be out on YouTube. Well then. You just have to follow uh, the Corning. Uh, I imagine you are if you're watching this. I'm not. Although, is this is live. So is this being shown on YouTube or right now live? Yes. Okay. Ooh. But then later um, it'll be re put on YouTube as a as after it was edited or, you know, made to look good. Is it okay for us to make you talk to us while you're videoing us? We just did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Harry. Streaming live on YouTube and Facebook. Oh, right. we're on Facebook too. Hi, everybody. Hello, Mark, whatever your last name is. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. <laughs> Zuckerberg. Sorry, Mark. Sorry, Facebook, that I haven't been posting much lately, but apparently I'm on there right now. Yay! You win. I come in spurts. You can tell when I haven't been photographing a lot, you don't see a lot of me. I've also, if I'm, life is kicking me around a little bit, and then I, I go on a photographing spree and I'll show up. And I'm a fledgling YouTuber as well. I got 29 or maybe 31 subscribers. Woohoo! <laughs> hey, Mike. Yes? What is your YouTube handle? Uh, Michael Fig Mangifico. How do you spell that? It's uh, M I C H A E L F I G M A N G I A F I C O. Michael, Thanks. what? Mangifico. All right. Michael? It's Michael Fig Mangifico, actually, but you'll find it. So if someone wants to go on YouTube and look for you, they look for Michael Fig <laughs> Michael Mangifico. Fig Mangifico. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Wes. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sponsored by? Thank you to Corning. Yes. Thank you so much to Corning for having us here. Absolutely. Yes. This it's is so phenomenal. fun. Corning is such a wonderful place to teach. Agreed. Maybe at some point the camera will pan around the room and show you this Rolls Royce of Flameworking Studios. It's no, literally the student. best Flameworking Studio I've ever worked in in my entire life. And I love teaching here. <laughs> Strokes. <laughs> we'll expect the check later. I love Corning. I do too, actually. I also, while we're plugging Corning, if you ever come to Corning, I want to plug the Raycal Library and the librarians. Yep. They have so many incredible things in the library. And you can make an appointment with them. You can even go on the website and talk with the librarians and they will send you things in the mail. Yeah, you don't even have to come here to You can to tell them library. what you want to know about glass and they are the largest resource for glass in the world. Anything that you want to know about glass, you ask the Corning librarian and they amazingly get back to you. Get back to you <laughs> and sometimes you might regret it because they have a lot of information and they do not hesitate to send you a lot of information. Really? Mike, you better hurry up. I'm pretty close. Um, Thank you, Jade. 
I can't really, I can't really see the clock from where I'm sitting. Yeah, me either. I'm just like, I'm so far out. Here. When I work glass, time disappears. It does. So when you teach glass, it's funny. Like the people come and they're learning it, and like it's a three-hour workshop, and you're done, and it's like everybody there felt like five minutes just happened. I might just have to call it quits on this tail and go with what I have. The tail typically has 10 segments and I'm up to nine here, so. So I just added antenna on the face of my dragonfly. I don't even know if you can see that. They have very tiny antennas. I like tiny details in my glass. All right, I'm gonna quickly add legs. Thank you, Jade, again. <laughs> Yeah, don't put any stress on us. Sorry, I just thought. No, no, it's no. good. It would be a good idea to remind you. It would be good to finish the demo. <laughs> It'll be good to finish the demo. We do have some finished um, examples of our work in the room, but not one our. One thing about being the, an artist, a class artist or a flame worker, I guess, particularly. When you are in your studio working, at least in my case, maybe not if you're in a big shared studio, you're the only one there and there's like not much of a reminder of time and you're really focused. So it can be very easy to even forget to eat. <laughs> Truth. Or do other things which are very important to get up and do. So I oftentimes forget about those important things, including time. Tail. I've got a tail, I've got wings completed. Um, and actually, to be honest, um, they take some time to make the components and assemble. I'm gonna make a head next, and then what I do when I make the dragonflies, after I have the head, tail, and wings made, I make the thorax, and I assemble everything to the thorax. I don't. Um, make the thorax and head together. I do it as one, as three separate things. So when I'm making the thorax, it's assembly time. And that's kind of uh, a critical time. So anyways, let's get to this head quick. And then... Is the head going to be dichroic too? Oh yeah. Jeez. But it's quick. The head isn't easy. Yeah, quick. but I mean, yours is going to be way sparklier than mine. Well, you know. But at least rods, mine will be done, rods. huh? Yeah, well, there's that. <laughs> Maybe I, and to make it work, we can have uh, your finished one eating the pieces of mine. Sure. Well, you know, we've got to make it real, right? Oh, absolutely. Dragonflies, Dragonflies eat anything they eat can you get if there. They could. Yeah. They look all like ethereal and pretty, but they're flying around, oh, they're, ripping they're like things cats. up. They're like cats, they're nasty. So I'm putting the second segment of each of the legs on. You can really see the bot, you know, everything's kind of come together for the dragonfly there. It just doesn't have the feet or the wings on it yet. Nice. Well, Legit. I'll make a head and I'll, uh, maybe we will do, maybe we should do that. I, I like the idea of one dragonfly eating the pieces of another yeah. dragonfly. Although that's going to take a lot of time to do too. Less so I'm time gonna, than uh, what we have planned, I would think, no? I'm going to put the feet on you my could just dragonfly. I'm dragon munching one of my tail or something. So they have this little claw on their leg right before where their feet start. Put that on first. And then dragonflies have five segments to each of their feet. They're tarsal segments, just like the tarsal bones in your feet. Yeah, you have a hip, femur, tibia, 
and then the tarsals, metatarsals and tarsals. And I'd like to make sure that they're even. I want this to be able to stand when I'm done. And I'm using a very tiny rod of glass to make it easier for me to make a tiny gather of glass and also to make it easier to get it in where I need it. So I add the claw and then I melt back what I don't want to have on there. You can see the feet are building up. How are we doing now, Jade? We're past it, right? That was a slow six minutes, huh? <laughs> I think I made my head. Well, there we go. Mike, there's hope for you yet. Yeah, so I made my head a little on the small side. A little bit, not like an hour. No, you got that. What about two hours? I think if we were going to make my dragonfly eating his, that would take a whole nother hour. You think? Yes. Why? You just have like its tail munching down my... Maybe. Like in a wing sticking I out like of I like to get things stuck together well and yeah. looking right. So I think that would, that would take a long, long time. Again, notice I'm using the Marver on this torch as a wrist rest to help steady my hands. I'm going to bring it down to my graphite Marver and look how well the feet all touch. They're pretty good. So I'm going to start building up the rest of its feet. Take a deep breath. Are you going straight out? You just put my wings on that. I'm sorry? So that'll be a Frankenstein because you'll put the wings sure. that I made on that? You want to pass your wings over when you get a chance? You or bet. maybe one of our lovely assistants standing here behind us could help with that? Oh, uh, yeah, will you switch our wings? These four wings go to, not this one, these four go to west. And don't take that one. That one's garbage. Garbage. Sporchizia. So I'm just building up these foot segments, one tarsa at a time. I touch, heat up the connection point, touch down my gather, I stretch it out. And then I melt it back a little bit to make that nice little bump in between segments. I'll bring it down, check how the stand is. After I get the last little bit of the foot on there, I'm gonna go in, add head. a tiny a little claw. Time to make the body. So these fine little details are really about the heat control in the glass. Being able to read how hot the glass is and also only heating up a tiny connection point. If I heat the foot up too much and then touch the gather to it, I'll wind up with just another blob on there and not a tiny little claw. For me, it's just assembly time now. I won't get into so much crazy detail on my legs, because I typically don't, as Wesley does. There's the whistle. Must be noon, huh? I love that whistle, because I don't have to live with it. It's the time clock whistle. Corning has a citywide time clock whistle that goes off at Jen, what times? Yeah. 6.45. 7, 7.45 and 8. 
Jeez. You can't, you can, you probably didn't hear it on the video, but you can hear it from just about anywhere in town. And the funny thing is, the first day I was here, I only heard it at 7.45, so the second day when I heard it go off at 6.45, I Jumped woke up bed. extra quickly because I thought I was late. I'm running out of my room, and Mike is like, hey, what's going on? It's only 6.45 in the morning. There have four of the legs done. I, I got that. If I hold those against the bright table, maybe you can see them better. The special way to hold the glass when you need both hands. Now I'm going to do the back two feet. Same way as I did the other ones. And if I was on, we were on a cooking show, I would totally be failing when it's time. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> You've watched that show? I think I've seen it. That's one of my wife's favorite shows. Really? I like cooking shows. It's really, it's strange. like you learn nothing from it other than what, perhaps what not to do, what but it's really do. entertaining. But usually, typically with those shows, it's, it's all about time management. Yeah, that's all it is. Time management and who can make the worst whatever. Okay, so now I have another torch kind of tucked under my first torch. I'm going to use this torch to more easily adjust the angle of the legs. I love this little hand torch because it goes down super tiny and steady. And I can just go down, put it right where I want the legs. Maybe if I hold it at a better angle, you can see what I'm doing. Drop that leg right into place. Let it cool down. This tiny little flame has very concise heat, so I can get it right up against the body of the piece and only hit the knee without hitting the rest of the piece. So there you have the six legs. I'm going to put the last toes on. I put the wings on, I'm going to drop down my first segments of the legs so I can get to them once the wings are on. I'm going to take my handle, also known as the punty, off the tail. Whereas I'm using my tail as the punty or a handle. Just going to clean up those little pinchers. Now I have to be very careful not to touch it there while I'm holding it. So you can see the piece stands. Obviously it has no wings yet, but I'm about to fix that. First, the coffee break. Need coffee to steady my hands. Yeah. So I have these longer stubs on there so that I can come in there and heat up just a little bit of it without getting the heat down into the body. I've warmed up the end of this other rod so that it's warm enough to stick to the glass, which I heat up. And I'm coming in and just taking a little bit off the end of each of those to make them the same length. But also, by doing that, it puts a little bit of heat in there into those nubs 
and kind of prepares them to get more heat for the wing to have a nice full fuse to those nubs. Because if you just try to come in there with the hot gather on the wing and stick them together, there's not enough heat in there. Okay, so I have those melted off. I'm gonna bring these super special sparkly yellow wings, wings. which Mike made, Mike made. So Mike. Yes? Uh, are so the, oh, I them, never adjust, I didn't completely adjust them, but these are the hind wings. They're thicker all the way back. Okay. The four wings are thinner on the front. Okay. And they all four should match is inside. There they are. Okay, so the thicker ones are the hind wings? Yes. Okay. I'm going to put the, and should the black dot be going forward or backward? Back, uh, forward, please. Forward, okay. <coughs> I'm going to put the back wings on first, and then it will be easier for me to go around them to put on the front wings. If I put the front wings on first, then I have to go between those wings and the tail. in order to get the back wings on. So I'm heating up the nub, the tip of the wing, heating up that connection point. I touch them together, and then I stretch it out a little bit. So it has a nice, smooth connection point, which makes it much sturdier. I'm going to look and see how that wing stands. And I'm about to attach your wings as well. And do you have? Four and aft wings yourself? No. It doesn't have matter. at it. All right. Yeah. I mean, their two wings are more similar to each other than. That's, that's exactly what I'm doing, is I'm yeah. just sort of. But I don't care them. what order they go on and okay. where. Do you, do you tend to put your four wings on first or your aft wings? I put on the back wings first. Why? That way I don't have to go between the front wings and the tail to get the back wings on. That's interesting. I've always put on the four wings first, but I never really gave it much thought as to why I did that. So I'm going to try your way. Well, there's more than one way to skin a bug, right? You betcha. They don't have skin, though. They have a carapace. But yeah, it's one way. to shell a bug, huh? Whoops. I'm going to tighten my flame up nice and tight so I don't have radiant heat, shatter my glass. This, you know, by encapsulating the dichroic glass, I'm sure it's not as um, strong or as, um, I can't think of the right word, strong will work as far as uh, the glass itself is going to be more shocky, I think, because there's more going on. So I have these back two wings on. I'm happy with their stance. I'm going to remove the handle from them, hopefully without cracking them. Say that no. could always be a little iffy. I can hold this bug by the feet now or the back of the tail while I remove these handles. I do like putting the back legs on first. It makes so much more sense. Just one well, of those little dumb moments. It's so good to work We're with you. We're each learning things in these, this class, learning from each other. Ow. Do not touch That's your great. hand to the hot tip of the wing. I don't recommend it. For a good time. Two wings. Two to go. And then I'll finish the legs and they'll be done. Wow. I'm catching up somewhat. Ooh, the four wings are a little shorter than the aft wings. I guess I put the wrong Sorry. Oh, it's not your fault. I'm the idiot that put them together like this. I heard that. You heard that? Yeah, that you wasn't can, a good can, sound. Oh, did you hear crack? I heard a tink. Um, from me or you? From you. Or maybe from Diane. I hope it was Diane. Did you tink? <laughs> Diane tinked. I didn't hear a tank. Okay. But that doesn't mean I didn't tank. A tank for you listeners at home. 
is the sound of the death knell with glass. <laughs> you hear a tink, and then you have to start looking for a crack. Just call me Tinkerbell. I got three of the four wings on. Same. Hey, look at that. You are catching up. I better hurry. Well, I still have to put the final tarsals on the feet, but besides that, um, and I never put the black dots. I'll do that off camera later. I'll put the black dots on the, the petri stigma on the uh, wings. And if I have to, I'll finish the legs later too, but. It'd be neat if they could both be standing at the end of the video, but we'll just go with the flow, you know. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. You guys have watched this far, for those of you watching. What's another uh, couple of minutes, huh? I got to deal with a couple of minutes. It I doesn't stand flat, so the solution for that. Make it stand flat. Yes, good old hand torch. Before I had this hand torch. You had to do it the hard way. I used to go in and out of the flame over and over and over and over and over again until yeah. things, you go in the flame, adjust it, whoa. Welcome to my world, yeah. Adjust it, then come back to the bug and or back down to the marver, check the stance, like, it could take half an hour to do what I just did in one second. And I even mixed it, messed it up and fixed it again. Especially the last leg too. You'll get all the legs standing right and then the one leg just fight with you. Is that a good angle? All right, caught. I'm close, I'm not that far behind. If you wanna. And I'm shaky today, too. I didn't drink coffee. I had maybe four cups of tea. <coughs> now, so. You're nervous because you're on camera. Yeah. Maybe you need some sparkly lip balm. I do need sparkly lip balm. That's life. I, I don't have any, and I really do need sparkly lip balm. I was shaking when I transferred the wings. <laughs> you didn't break them. Thank you, Jade. Yes, thank You're a very you, good assistant. We've had a really good class this week. I've really enjoyed each and every one of you. Nobody's run out of the classroom crying. And we're only halfway through. We're only half. Yeah, we haven't. Yeah. We're not done yet. The scary part is yet to begin. Right. We, we're just getting started here. Find the right angle because I don't want the flame to go past what I'm doing and then break what I've already done or melt it. And I'm just about there. Two, another fem uh, tibia and then a couple of tarsals to make it stand. Wow, look at me shake. Take a deep breath. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Wes. I noticed something. That's a lot longer. I need to shorten it. Look at the sparkle in your tail. Your tail is so much fancier than mine. Schmancy. I think Mike is the only one I've ever seen using dichroic for dragonfly tails and bodies and heads. Well, how many people have you seen make dragon? Uh, there's a number of us. There, there are some people who make dragonflies, that is for sure. Yeah, Diane just showed me a picture of her dragonfly that she, or damselfly. Yes, I like, I use dichroic. There you Atta go. girl. Damselfly is very similar to a dragonfly. The main difference visually to we humans is that when the damselflies land, their wings are tucked together, whereas when a dragonfly lands, its wings are resting apart. A dragonfly is a more primitive animal. Hmm. Um, they tend to be thicker. The damselfly tends to be a lot thinner, more spindly. Um, I'm gonna set this up over here and I'm shaking. Maybe we can do the old. 
Uh, if, set it, if it's not standing, it. we'll get it to. Uh... Wow, did Look I nail that. it? Yeah. Gee. Nice. Nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. Let me make them kiss. Is that good? All right.